You guys remember back in high school when he did like the G-Cat thing in biology? No? Well, Mr. Crouch is going to remind you. Hey, what's up, bookworms and crouch potatoes? We are back again to talk some more Blake Crouch because we are getting really close to release day for Upgrade, the newest sci-fi thriller by the man, Blake Crouch. Now, Blake Crouch for me, guys, is at this point is a guy that is automatic. I'm going to read no matter what he puts out, and I've got good news for you. I think if you're like me and you kind of have that attitude, you're going to be quite happy with this book. But I want to say first up that I was sent a review copy of this from Mr. Crouch's publicist, uh, Diana. She actually sent me this in exchange for an honest review, obviously, and she also lined up an interview with Blake Crouch on the channel, which you guys will finally get to see sometime this week. More on that a little bit later, but uh, I want to uh, thank both of those for uh, for, for helping me out on getting uh, this book early and being able to read it, and that way I can talk to all of you guys about it now. So, uh, is this going to be able to follow up the greatness that was Dark Matter and Recursion. We're going to talk about it, guys. We're going to start with what is the book about. Now, at first, Logan Ramsey isn't sure if anything's different. He just feels a little sharper, better able to concentrate, better at multitasking, reading a bit faster, memorizing better, needing less sleep. But before long, he can't deny it. Something's happening to his brain, to his body. He's starting to see the world and those around him, even those he loves the most, in whole new ways. The truth is, Logan's genome has been hacked. And there's a reason he's been targeted for this upgrade. A reason that goes back decades to the darkest part of his past and a horrific family legacy. Worse still, what's happened to him is just the first step in a much larger plan. One that will inflict the same changes on humanity at large at a terrifying cost. Guys, that leads us to the release this week of Upgrade by Blake Crouch. Now, um, with the good and the bad on this, I'm going to start with the good like usual. And you guys, by now, if you watch the channel at all, you can know I'm a huge Michael Crichton fan. And I have crowned Blake Crouch the next Michael Crichton. And I've got to say, guys, I think this is his most Michael Crichton book yet. This, If you thought that science was a character in some of his previous books, you have no idea what you're in for. The science is in your face unapologetically in this book. And I love it. I love the idea. The thing this time. Okay, so what do you do? He said, so, okay, he's done. Uh, time travel, he's done alternate realities, and he's done uh, infinite timelines. So what's next? Now he's dealing with gene editing. If you don't know what that is, that's basically taking a DNA strand, taking out the imperfections and making everything perfect. So basically, it's kind of like that Bradley Cooper movie, uh, uh, Limitless, I think that's what, was it Bradley Cooper? It might have been Bradley Cooper, uh, where basically we're going to fix the side of your brain that don't work. We're doing that with like the entire human genome. It's great. It's great. So it makes everyone a little more perfect, I think you would say. But, uh, you know, obviously this isn't something that's being uh, just kind of passed around like candy. It's just something that is an idea and it is actually being used on a few select people for reasons I'll let you decide or read when you get there. But uh, I just, I love the idea of gene editing. And why I say also this feels very, very Crichton is he would introduce technology and science that we feel like is possible. It's on the horizon and why we maybe shouldn't do it. And I feel like that is very much this. Gene editing, I feel like we can't do it now. I, I can see it happening in our lifetimes easily. But this book kind of shows maybe that's not the best idea. You know, I, I, I want to thank, uh, you know, for, for, you know, if you got someone who's like got dementia or autism, could we fix things like that? That's when it's always things like this. Ideas always start for the greatest and most noble of purposes, and they always go too far. So I think that's what a book like this kind of stresses. And I love it because it's never in a grinding your axe kind of way. This is not about what's wrong with humanity. Pride never did that. He never did that. He did kind of admit that humanity would come up with amazing ideas and overreach a little bit. And I think that's kind of what Mr. Crouch does here. So I really do appreciate that as a fan of Crichton, just the idea of altering, uh, just altering a D-Day strand and making everything better. Just, uh, yeah, a very, very Jurassic Park in that kind of way. So I think the book, book is good at presenting the uh, the question of at what point are we less than human? You know, if we keep messing around with things like this, what part, uh, what point do we start treating everyone who doesn't have this as subhuman? You know, I, I think that that's, that's always the great moral questions when you start dealing with stuff like this. But this guy goes even deeper 
with upgrading the human body. You know, it isn't just that you're super smart. I mean, you are good at just about everything, including health and fitness and thinking <laughs> and everything, guys. You, you are just, you are a machine. You are just a well-oiled machine. And he shows that with some of the combat that's in this book. Now, I would never say that Michael, uh, Michael Crichton, <laughs> whoops, uh, that's, hey, that's a good problem. Uh, Blake Crouch never really is anyone that I'm going to say is a great action writer. I've never really felt that with his books. I think he has incredible ideas and he has some really just non-stop where you can't stop turning the pages because you're enthralled. But I never would say he's someone who writes really great action. I, I think this book has some really good has really good fights because when you think about the stuff where you have like these two almost perfectly genetic humans and they're facing each other, it's it's like, oh my God, it's like watching uh, Neo and Morpheus fight in the Matrix, you know? And then you got the thing where you got uh, one of these people who does have this against just like r regular plain people. And it's kind of like Neo versus Smith at the end where he's like, eh, uh, whatever. You know, it's, it's amazing the way that he writes this thing where they're like just kind of like sidestepping things. It's always like, uh, almost like in a Batman way. You're always thinking like six moves ahead of your opponent. So I love the ideas he presents. I think he writes the action very good, but this is every bit the techno thriller in the regard that Mr. Crichton used to write and that you cannot stop turning the pages. You've got to know what happens next. There's never really a drag. I do think this, this book has like kind of a middle section, which we'll talk about in a minute, but I never really felt the drag with this book and I did finish it in a few sittings like I do with every Blake Crouch book. But uh, yeah, he continues the, uh, the the fast pace where it just seems like it's just nonstop, uh, this a thriller, the whole ride. But I got to say with Logan, the main character in this, he seems like just a guy on the surface and he slowly peels away layers of this character about his past about his family and things like that and you realize ah oh, so i see how he got into this situation it's really good but i think that uh something that he does really well in all of his books is he always is real good at putting the emphasis on family and being separated from loved ones. He always really does it. Like you think about Jason and Dark Matter. You think about, uh, I can't think of the main character's name right now, Recursion off the top of my head. But when these characters are separated from loved ones, how it changes their life. And that is very much prevalent in this one, you know, the, the extended family, or I'm sorry, the main family, the, the family that, he, that Logan has began in this being kind of away from them. So I, I think that that's a theme that is always prevalent in his books, whether it's, you know, being, uh, you know, stolen, uh, you know, death parting us or staying away from them for their greater good. That's always seems to be a theme in his books. And uh, I, as a family man, do appreciate that uh, quite a bit. But I love also kind of like getting thrown into the middle of this world. It is in our near future. It doesn't give an exact date. There are some hints and clues in here, guys, if you want to kind of decipher them and find out exactly what year it is. I was able to do that, and uh, Mr. Crouch did confirm it when we spoke. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's a near future, but he doesn't tell you why there's like these big food shortages and things. What's going on? And he kind of slowly reveals that over the course of the book, and it's just compelling, compelling stuff. I love that. But then when you get to like the end of Logan's story here, like I'm not going to lie, guys, the, the last few pages in this are going to hit you in the feels. It's, uh, it's some deep stuff. Even though I felt like the relationships were done a little better in Dark Matter Recursion, I think those are just about perfect techno thrillers. So it's really a high bar there. So I, I can't really say it's, it's as good as that, but I will say the, the last few pages of this will really hits you, uh, especially if you got kids, guys, as there is some uh, dad shit, as I call it in there, uh, in this book quite a bit. So I also love that uh, some of the betrayals and the backstabs in this are just chaos. I mean, I never saw some of them coming. And almost in the kind of that wayward pines kind of way where your main character is just going to be paranoid. As, as the reader, you're just paranoid the whole time. Like, okay, who isn't in on this? You know, you'll start to feel like that after a while. And you'll be like, should I be trusting this person or not? Should Logan be trusting this person or not? So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's madness, but in the best way. It never feels cheap. And uh, I think he does have some good twists and turns in here, even when you might be expecting them a little bit. Because I do talk about that, that little middle section is a little different than he's done in most of his books. And I think that because that the way that he does it keeps the book from being predictable. And I like that quite a bit. That did feel like a little bit of a change from previous outings. But uh, I love that most of the ideas in this is just, like I said, uh, about wanting what's the best for humanity. And then it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And you're like, 
wow, how did we start here and now we're all the way over here with this great, great idea. Now there is no perfect book. So let's talk about maybe some of the, the not so good things. Now these didn't necessarily bother me. They might get to you. Uh, if you're not into science, this science might be a bit much for you in this one. Uh, I think this is, like I said, about as hard of science as like the Andromeda strain was in that he's going to have pages and pages of like DNA coding and stuff like that. To me, it's not a big deal. You can skip over them. I, I can imagine if you're listening to this on audiobook, they'll be quite hilarious listening to the uh, the narrator kind of read the sequencing code. But I don't even know if they do that if they skip over it because, you know, I don't audio. But uh, I do say it's not that big a deal if you're reading it, guys. You can just kind of skip over it if you want to. There are hints and clues in there, but you know what? Uh, I never learned to code, so I wasn't really breaking down the coding and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I think that the middle section I talked about is a bit slow for Blake Crouch standards. I think uh, it, it really, your character does, there is very clear... Uh, first, second, and third acts in this. And the first and third are just straight action techno thriller like you're used to with Blake Crouch. The middle section, you do have a time to kind of catch your breath. And it does almost kind of get into like a little bit of a mystery. And I think that's very different than what people are used to with a Blake Crouch book. Like I said, to me, it kept it from being predictable because I kept asking questions the whole time. And some of the confrontations in that middle part are really where you see the development between Logan and his sister, which is a very, very, pretty much a linchpin of the story is those two's relationships. So I really do uh, appreciate it, but I can see some people thinking, okay, most Blake Crouch books I get through in like, you know, four hours. Uh, well, this one might take you six instead, but I, I doubt it, guys. This, is a, this, is a, this was a quick, quick read for me, but I, I don't think I've ever said that a Blake Crouch book was a long read, honestly. So uh, it, in that regard, I think you're gonna be fine. But those are some things I think that might not work for you. But let me get into why I think that you should just forget all that noise and go ahead and read it. Uh, if you've read, read Blake Crouch in the past and you've had a good time, I think you will here too. I don't think that there's enough different that you're just going to be like, this doesn't feel like the same guy that I've, I've loved with Dark Matter and Recursion and Wayward Pines. Uh, you'll definitely feel like it is the same author. I think his his uh, his writing style is still the same there. I think that you're going to enjoy what you find, what you're looking for when you pick up a Blake Crouch book. You're going to be entertained and you're never going to be bored. But if you, uh, you're you starting here for the first time, I'm not sure this is the book that's going to make turn you into a Crouch potato. Uh, but uh, I definitely definitely think that you'll be fine with it. I think that Blake Crouch books like a Michael Crichton or Stephen King are great to read. If you're like reading big fantasy books or long series, this is something good to kind of break up that monotony. That's what I always recommend. You're in a little bit of a reading slump, pick up a Crichton book, pick up a Crouch book. I always have said that'll get you back in reading mode. So uh, that, that continues to be the case here. But uh, look, it's, uh, it's fast paced, low commitment. You'll be done with it a night or two. Uh, I think that's always something that's good uh, for the old palate cleanser if you are into doing that. So how about some final thoughts before I go here? Look, after Dark Matter and Recursion, Upgrade has some big shoes to fill. And I think it's really unfair to kind of put it up to those standards. Because, I mean, I think that, like I said, Dark Matter and Recursion are about as perfect as a techno thriller can get. Uh, so I it was going to be hard to really surpass those for me. I think this comes in like just under one of those. I don't think it's as good as those two, but again, like I said, I'm saying that those are almost perfect books. So it's really, really hard for me to really say, oh, you know what? He didn't hit three grand slams in a row. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with this book. It's just, you're gonna have high expectations if you've read Dark Matter and Recursion. And I don't think it quite hits those, but it's every bit as entertaining as those. And he does hit all those emotional beats that I have found uh, surprisingly so that uh, that is in every Blake Crouch book. He is able to get those, and I think it's because of his emphasis on uh, f family and relationships and uh, it being separated. I think that's something that is definitely big in all of his books, and it really does uh, you know, hit the old heartstrings in this one. So I love that he's flexing his science muscles kind of unapologetically, even more so than before. Like, I think with recursion, you were like, look, it makes my head hurt. I understand what he's saying, but it makes my head hurt to think about it. It doesn't make my head hurt because you're trying to understand some things. I never think it gets to the point where it's past layman's terms, like you're just not going to understand what's going on. But it's one of those kind of things. Uh, like with Andy Weir, if you want to dive deeper into the science, you can, but it's not necessary for you to understand the book. All you need to understand is they're doing gene editing and they're, you know, messing around with DNA strands. You know, that's the important thing for you to understand here. So the only critical thing I have to say is, look, it isn't as good as the last two books. 
But again, that's a really, really high bar. You know, so I think that this one is really, really good. If you've enjoyed Blake Crouch's other works, you're going to have a good time with that. And uh, on his own, it's another thrilling adventure. And I continue to say that this guy is the next Michael Crichton, which is as high of an honor just about as I can give anyone that is currently writing. So look out for that interview that I have with Blake Crouch coming later this week. Uh, we did record it a few months ago, so you might be a little shocked that I still have hair in that video. But uh, at the time, uh, he was on location because they are making a dark matter television show for apple tv and he is working on that and uh, i just said hey we would put this out around the release of the book so look for that later on sometime this week it was a great conversation i really enjoyed it and i'm really really happy that he agreed to come on the channel quite willingly i didn't have to bend his, i didn't have to twist his arm very much at all so that's very very exciting easily the highest profile uh i, I think look i've had some really great authors on here uh, but, you know, let me be honest with you guys. Fantasy authors aren't really tearing up the New York Times bestseller list. And Blake Crouch does. So I, I say this is probably the highest profile author that I've had on the channel yet. And that isn't meant as a detraction to any of the other amazing, wonderful authors I've had on the channel. It's just I'm just saying that this is, this is a pretty big deal for me personally. So I was very excited to do it. And I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, Blake and, of course, Diana for putting this all together. I do thank you guys. So, guys, I hope you will pick up upgrades out this Tuesday. I think you're going to enjoy what you read. So if you've read it, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you want to go ahead and like rank some of his books, why don't you go ahead and do that? That's always a lot of fun. Would you like better? Dark Matter or Recursion? That seems to always be the conversation among Crouch Potatoes. But guys, I enjoyed this quite a bit. I think you will too. So I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. <laughs>